So when I was sent for, I came without objection. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone without the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Matthew, glory to you, O Lord. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many spirits. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Greetings and welcome to this week's devotion. If you are joining us for this Father's Day, I want to wish all fathers happy Father's Day and God's blessings and help in this important calling. The reading that I chose for today comes from the 10th chapter of Acts, in which we hear what is sometimes described as the second Pentecost story, as recorded in the book of Acts. This one is the story of God's Spirit coming upon Gentiles. You see, one of the themes of the book of Acts is how the Holy Spirit moves the church from one tiny band of Jesus' exclusively Jewish followers to a movement of thousands and thousands of people, both Jews and Gentiles, scattered around the Roman Empire. And of course today, there are more than two billion followers. So let's take a, a look at Acts chapter 10. 
Chapter 10 begins with a Roman centurion named Cornelius. Now, a centurion was a high-ranking official. Probably an equivalent might be a colonel or a general in today's army. Anyhow, St. Luke tells us that Cornelius was a devout man and feared God. And in a vision, God told Cornelius to send for Simon Peter, who was in the city of Joppa at the time. And so Cornelius did just that. He sent for Simon Peter. It just so happens that at about the same time, Peter was praying, and he also had a vision. It was a strange vision of unclean animals in the sky. And then he heard a voice telling him to get up, kill, and eat. To which Peter, who was a devout Jew, said, By no means, Lord, I've never eaten anything that was considered unclean. To which the voice responded, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This vision happened for Peter three times. Now, while Peter was still puzzling about this vision, the voice from God responded that there were three men looking for him. The voice said, go with them. So the next day, Peter went with the men to Caesarea. And this is where our reading picks up at verse 27. And when Peter arrives, they invite him to stay. He tells them that he has never done anything like this before. You yourselves know, says Peter, that it's unlawful for a Jew to associate with a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. And then Cornelius tells Peter about his vision. This is when Peter senses that God is doing something very new and very powerful. And so he says... I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears Him and does what is right is acceptable to Him. And then the discussion continues. Cornelius and the other Gentiles make a confession of faith, and Peter asks, Can anyone withhold baptism from these people? For they too have received the Holy Spirit. Now this is an amazing story. And in this powerful story, St. Luke reminds us that God's Spirit does not just come to one group of people, but to all people. And in fact, the scriptures remind us that God loves all people and wants grace and mercy and love for all people and all of creation. This is why the book of Acts tells the story of how the church, led by the Holy Spirit, moves from only a small group of Jews to include everyone. We soon learn that what the Holy Spirit does, the Spirit of God brings new people into the church and seeks to unite all people. But guess what? The book of Acts also tells us that there were some who did not like where the Holy Spirit led. There were some who thought in order to be a true follower of Jesus, you had to be Jewish first. In the early days of the, ch of the church, this became quite a controversy about how to welcome Gentiles into the church. But today, we are very glad that Gentiles were welcomed because if the Holy Spirit hadn't moved the church to include and welcome Gentiles, then none of us would be part of the church today. My point in reminding us of this story is to remind us that the Spirit of God often moves in ways that are not always comfortable for us, not always clear to us at the time, and are not always neat. Or easy. But I do want to assure you that the Holy Spirit has been and continues to be at work in our lives and in the world today, whether we can see the Spirit at work or not. I also want to assure you that the Holy Spirit is at work right now in the midst of all the troubles of our world. In the midst of a pandemic, the Holy Spirit is at work. In the midst of an economic crisis, the Holy Spirit is at work. And now, in the midst of strife about how some of our nation's police officers have abused people and used deadly force with callous disregard, the Holy Spirit is also at work in these painful issues as well. In fact, it is often at times like this when we look back and see God at work. This is certainly true of our own nation's history. We look back 160 years and we see that God was encouraging the abolitionists 
and the nation to end the horrific practice of slavery. We look back 75 to 80 years ago, and we see that God was on the side of those who fought to end fascism in the world, and the Axis powers declaration that one group of people is better than another. And a couple of decades later in the 50s and 60s, we look back now and see that God was on the side of ending segregation and Jim Crow laws. And now, and now we see God at work, making reform happen in our police departments and pushing us to confront a racist and violent past. And yet amazingly, God is also giving us a chance to help bring good news out of this moment. In spite of the many times we have failed in the past, the good news is that God is giving us another opportunity to do the right things. God is moving hearts and minds to help us see that something is wrong and it is time to fix that which is wrong. And again, the good news is that God is moving us toward love and away from hate. God is being gracious with us and reminding us of the basic truths that we all learned when we were young, such as the golden rule, Treat others as we ourselves would prefer to be treated. Or in Genesis 1, where God is almost done with creation and then decides to make humankind in God's image. This, of course, means that all of us are created in the image of God, young and old, male and female, brown and yellow, black and white. And in Matthew 25, we are reminded that we're called to defend the vulnerable to welcome the stranger, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit those in prison, and to help those who do not have shelter. Again, this is a message of hope, because God is at work in the world trying to make things right. God is already out there trying to make these things happen. The only question is, will we join the work of the Holy Spirit? Will we pray for a better world? Will we listen to the voices of people we may not have listened to before? And will we do something to encourage a better world? Will we be a people of hope? Will we be a beacon of light? Will we be Easter people every day of the year? I hope that every one of us can answer these questions. Yes, 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 and yes. Jesus says in today's gospel reading, let us not be afraid. So let us go forward looking for signs of hope, praying for God's help, and finding ways to join the work of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, the Lamb, who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Ocean 
wings tied, rolling in fullest pride through the earth far and wide. Let there be light. our sins and our own culpability to the problems of this world. Help us, renew us and lead us so that we can walk in your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we give you thanks for summer and light and for our fathers. We ask that you help all fathers to be examples of faith and hope in the lives of their children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your suffering, Lord Jesus, you identify with all who suffer, including all those who are suffering due to the virus which plagues us and our world. Help us to show love and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God, we think of the killings of Rayshard Brooks, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Amar Arbor. Help our nation to confront the sin which damages and affects us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for police across the nation. And we give thanks for many wise and well-meaning officers. Help us to help them police better and more humanely for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At the same time, we pray for changes so that the use of deadly force can be reserved only when life is truly threatened, for a deadly mistake cannot be undone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for brothers and sisters at Zion Lutheran Church in Valley City and Pastor Jim Watson and those at St. Matthew Lutheran Church and Pastor Bill Dean and Deacon Lindsey Bill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Precious Jesus and comforting spirit, we pray for all young people, including those who are unsure of their future right now. We lift them before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Almighty God, we pray for our world leaders, our president, our governor, and congressional leaders. May their decisions be wise, and may they respond with compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Creator, we pray for those responding with science and medicine to this pandemic. We pray for all who work among the sick. Give them strength to endure. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we pray for those who are not able to work. We think of those who are worried those who are angry or frustrated. May we respond with patience and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Holy Triune God, we pray for our members and friends, those who are away from us, those who feel isolated, and all who are on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In risen Christ, we pray for those who are grieving, especially those whose grief is new. Comfort them, O Lord, and help us to reach out to all who grieve. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today.